Hey folks, it's Daniel again. Uh, I wanted to do a quick recap of sorts for uh, Python's argument unpacking feature. So um, to give you a motivating example here, let's say we have this function that uh, takes these three arguments, x, y, z, and you know you could imagine this is some kind of vector that we're, we're passing in and we wanna process somehow. And in this case, we're just gonna print it out, right? But you could imagine this would scale, uh, transform this vector, do something with it. Um, so now we're going to define a couple of different representations for a 3D vector. So uh, one idea would be just to have um, a tuple. And um, that would be the data structure that would re represent a, a single 3D vector. Uh, we could also come up with a sing with a with a different solution where we say, okay, we actually we're actually going to define uh, our vectors such that they're uh, dictionaries, uh, where we kind of explicitly give names um, to each uh, to each field, and. Um, it's probably not something you would do in reality. Like I kind of like the the tuple uh, the tuple approach here. But what I wanted to show you is that let's say we want to actually pass these vectors to my funk, right? So one way to do it will be to actually go and say tuple vec zero tuple vec one tuple vec two, right? So we we basically pass in um, the XYZ coordinates manually. We need to unpack that from our tuple vector and then we get that printout. Um, and it would be really, it would work really similarly with, um, with the dictionary vector. So again, we would say, okay, we'll take the X argument and try and see if I can make this a little faster by copying some stuff around. You, you can already see, you know, the, the fact that I'm, copying this stuff around is not a good sign. Um, so uh, a better way to do this, and uh, of course the Python people, the creators of Python have thought of this, is actually to use the unpacking feature in Python. So um, let me show you how that works. Uh, basically what you can do, you can put a little asterisk here, a little star, and then just pass tuplevec. And what this is gonna do, it's, uh, it's gonna unpack the, uh, the, that tuple here, and just pass it to the function um, in exactly the order uh, these values are specified in the tuple vector. So what this is gonna do, this is gonna lead to exactly the same result, right? So this is gonna take, okay, it's gonna take the first field here and it's gonna um, put it into the X argument. It's gonna take the second field, put it into the Y argument. It's gonna take the third field and put it into the Z argument. So we get exactly the same result, right? So this guy and this guy they're equivalent. And you can actually do the same thing with um, the, uh, the dictionary vector, because again, here you can um, tell Python to unpack the, um, to unpack the dictionary. And if you put the double star, it's gonna be smart enough to actually map the keys in our dictionary to um, the function arguments and, and their names. Because you know a dictionary doesn't really have an order associated with it, right? So it, it's not gonna be stored, like it doesn't know that X comes first and comes Y and then comes Z. So we need to tell it to, to actually map these um, keys to the corresponding function arguments. And the way you do that is by using uh, these two stars. So when you do that, it actually also works. And if you try it with a single star, uh, then you're gonna get this uh, random, well, it's a, yeah, not really a random result, but basically what happens is you get the keys unpacked in random order, and uh, that's not what we want. So this might lead to really weird bugs, but um, if you do it correctly, then it can be a really handy, uh, handy shorthand for uh, passing these um, larger data structures to a function, just kind of make sure everything has a nice name to it, and you can you know pass different representations to the same function with the same signature and it's gonna be able to deal with it. So um, something to keep in mind, you know, as usual with all of this stuff, you gotta be a little bit careful not to do 
or use too much magic because it can kind of obfuscate obfuscate what you're really trying to do and what your intentions are. But um, I think in this case, at least, it's it's pretty benign, right? So if you have your vectors represented as Python tuples, which I think makes sense in a lot of cases, and you want your function uh, maybe to work with named uh, coordinates here, then uh, doing something like that, I think, would be fair and would actually be a good thing in terms of readability and, and, and making the code look nice. Cool. I hope this was helpful, kind of a short one. And um, come back for more if you want.